BBC has published the details of the Apostolic Constitution and its complementary norms. And they are now putting into the public forum this provision that's being made in the Catholic Church worldwide uh, for those who have been seeking a way of full communion, uh, particularly from the Anglican Communion or from the edges or just outside the, the formal Anglican Communion. So I think what it means immediately is there's a lot to study, there's a lot to look at, there's a lot to uh, work through. And that applies certainly to anyone who has been making these requests of the Holy See, because this is now the, the response of the Holy See. Have you and any... it's also a lot of work for us because we have to, there's a part for bishops' conferences to play in, and we have to do some preliminary work. Have you any indication of how many in your archdiocese might be interested? I, I've had no indication at all. Uh, the only thing I'm aware of, for example, is that I think at the Forward in Faith meeting, one or two there said they will take this very gradually and they, they want to have a, a good look and, and see what's what. And I wouldn't expect any um, quick or definite responses. I think it's a time just to, to ponder what's, what the response of the Holy See has been and take time. Uh, the There's no rush. The document says that um, married Anglican bishops could be the, an ordinary, could be the ordinary if they had the status of a presbyter, but they might be able to apply to Rome for the insignia of the Episcopal office. Is that, does that mean married bishops? No, it doesn't. That's exactly what it doesn't mean. The exercise of ordinary jurisdiction, that means kind of oversight, uh, isn't confined to the status of a bishop. So, for example, when a bishop dies, it's normally a priest of the diocese who steps in and exercises ordinary jurisdiction. So in one sense, for a priest to be an ordinary is, is quite ordinary, is quite normal. But the, it, the, the central issue of Episcopal ministry, of course, is the key sacraments of the consecration of chrism for the use in the sacraments throughout the diocese and the ordination of priests. And only bishops can do those things. And the, the, there won't be married bishops, there haven't been married bishops, and that's not going to change. So if they have their own seminaries, who would do the ordin ordinations if the ordinary wasn't a bishop? Well, I think the document says that if students from the ordinary are being prepared for priesthood, they will be prepared in the context of the diocesan seminaries while having supplementary courses or maybe a house of formation. Uh, if the ordinary isn't a bishop, then it'll be the diocesan bishop who will provide the ordinations. Now, it also says that former Catholics who became Anglicans won't be able to go back, would, and which seems a little bit harsh, perhaps, to some uh, of them. And also, what about um, Catholics, people who are ordinary confirmed Catholics? Would they be able to take communion in the Anglican ordinariate? I mean, the, 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 ordinary, the personal ordinary is, is part of the Catholic Church, yes. full stop. So its celebration of Mass will be exactly the same as mine. And if there were ordinary, if there were ordinary parishes, Catholics could free to go wherever they want because it's simply part of the Catholic Church. So why then couldn't... An well, I think that it's about a particular provision. And it is a provision for those who are coming from the Anglican tradition and wanting in some way to carry part of that tradition with them. So that's who it's for. Uh, and how these things work out in practice, we've got to wait and see. I've been told by um, one bishop, Anglican bishop, how it's remarkably generous and imaginative. Is that your response as well? Well, I think when uh, the initial press conference took place, uh, I commented and I said that this, I believed, was very generous. And I attribute that to the fact that Pope Benedict on a couple of occasions has said that the priority of his pontificate is to try and draw people as, as in every way possible to a sense of the living faith of God in the community of the church. And for this, he says, acts of reconciliation, small and not so small, will be very important. And I think he sees this as an opening for a reconciliation the size of which we'll have to wait and see. Any message for your brother Archbishop across the Thames? To Archbishop Rowan? Yes. Uh, Archbishop Rowan and I have talked about these things. Uh, I think 
we understand each other very well. I think he knows uh, that I appreciate very much a strong Anglo-Catholic tradition within the Church of England, and I do not expect that to be weakened. This uh, moment is about those within the Anglican Communion or on its edges who are convinced that the See of Peter, as it is presently exercised by the Bishop of Rome, is essential for the life of the Church. That's who this is addressed to. And, and I believe it might help, in words that we use together, to bring to an end a time of uncertainty. Uh, and I think it might help, in that sense, some groups of Anglicans not to splinter away and be on their own.